Cents Per Mile, featuring Charles Gracie, Paul Gibson, and Josh Haynes. Everyone knows the trucking industry has issues, but most people are afraid to talk about it. Someone's got to do it. With loads of recruiting and marketing experience, and backed by the largest driver audience in the world, we deliver carriers the driver perspective, we find solutions, and help make sense make sense. Thank you for tuning in to Sense Per Mile. I'm your host, Charles Gracie. And I'm your co-host, Paul Gibson. Hey, I'm Jock Jock. No, that was a terrible joke. I'm Josh Haynes, and we're talking about AI taking your job away from you, Charles. That's what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah, we are. We're talking about AI and all that it has to offer or all the you know misconceptions behind it. Also, how you can use it in your marketing, potentially what the future looks like uh, and implications for trucking. But let's get to everything else prompt. See what I did there? Prompt. Anyway, all right. So that being said, we are on all the major listing platforms. We're on YouTube. So if you could go like, subscribe, rate the podcast wherever you can. Uh, the more you do that, the more engagement we get, the further we get out there, and the uh, the more the podcast grows, we can do some cooler stuff. Yeah, you can also check us out on com, where you can submit a topic to be a guest. You can even submit to become one of our sponsors. Sponsors? Speaking of, who's our sponsor today, Charles? We have Drivers Legal Plan, where they're out there trying to help drivers protect their licenses and carriers protect their drivers. You should check them out at driverslegalplan.com. Also, if you look in the description, uh, this fall is... Freight Waves Festival of Freight, also known as F3. Uh, one of the biggest parties of the year as far as like trucking and stuff is concerned. Uh, that being said, it's awesome. We will all be there. Um, and if you click the link, you actually get a pretty, pretty good discount uh, if you go through us. So check that out. If people uh, are there, are they going to get to see you uh, do the robot dance, Paul? Pro prob probably. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Anyway, it's time for the news. All right. So it's time for the news where we go look through CDL life. We check out some of the coolest, most interesting or most prevalent articles from the last couple of weeks. Uh, this one is uh, weird. Uh, so basically some deputies uh, made an out of this world traffic stop on I-44 in Missouri, there was somebody who basically created a flying saucer that drove and instead of flew. Uh, maybe we got a picture. A driving saucer. Yeah. Like, I don't even, I mean, I'm kind of impressed. I'm curious what, like, the base vehicle was. It has to be small based on this image. I mean, and it's all metal framed. It's like riding around in an oven. Yeah, but it also it also looks like it's got a steering wheel. Um, so I don't think it was like an 18. I'm just like, it, the only thing I could think of that's that size is like, is this a golf cart? <laughs> yep. Um, anyway, so that being said on to some scary stuff, since we're talking about AI, we grabbed a couple technology, uh, articles. So on I 35, they're starting to use x-rays for inspections i know that they did they do some of that stuff at the ports but like now going across the mexico border they are actually using x-rays um when they they do border crossings yeah it's pretty cool stuff to be honest with you uh you know the advancement of how to streamline this stuff because before coming in and out of ports or crossing borders you'd see these but seeing these now on the regular roadways away from just being on the port side I think it'll be quite beneficial to, you know, checking out and making sure that what's in these trailers is supposed to be what's in these trailers. And I get that. I don't know. I'm just always weird about like new technology and trucking I, and not because like I'm opposed to technology here. We are talking about it, but at the same time, I just feel like sometimes people find interesting ways to use those things and they become slippery slopes. Yeah. They're called the multi-energy portals, uh, which is, crazy i wonder if there's any kind of disclaimer as far as radiation or anything like that as you drive through a giant x-ray machine but it'll be interesting to see how, how this actually impacts the border crossing and controlling you know i imagine that this is looking for if it's carrying people if it's carrying drugs or any other nefarious things that could be in that trailer yeah it could actually do a lot you know for like the fentanyl issues that we have and and i get that it also sucks 
uh, for the guy that we talked about previously this season who like had the cocaine that was just wrapped in like the avocado or a lime wrapping paper or whatever it was. <laughs> That's not going to work. You're going to do better than wrapping paper, guys. Hopefully he reads CDL Life News and knows what's coming. <laughs> well, so that being said, the next one is uh, I love the title of the article because it's uh, what I said the first time that I heard the term. Uh, what is a level eight electronic inspection? <laughs> so the, the article kind of breaks it down. And uh, yeah, it's 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 interesting. Well, it's pretty cool because the whole premise, and they've been talking about this for a while, but the whole premise on it is that it will uh, a transponder kind of connection will allow those informations to be transferred to the DOT compliance enforcement in that area at the regular highway road speeds rather than trucks having to stop to transmit that. Um, which if you're using the ELD like most carriers are nowadays this is nothing but a convenience but for those that aren't well i mean this is one more layer of starting to even the playing field for the people that aren't doing it the right way yeah well i mean you know they're already i mean at least they push the the speed limit mandate like conversations uh next year but yeah uh, no it definitely does and that's that's a good point and and it's like obviously good for carriers it, it is great for those drivers who don't like won't have to pull over that's fantastic um i do wonder though because everybody knows with inspections sometimes it's not fair uh because they do still tend to turn like pull in people from certain companies knowing that those companies have a high rate of of issues with maintenance do you think somehow with this that that's still going to take place I'd imagine it's still going to take place the way that they've mapped out this work and is, you know, these vehicles are still going to exit, but maintain regular speed rather than stopping one by one. They're going to pass through it transmits. And then if they catch anything, it's going to be directed into the, uh, a more one-on-one -on -one encounter. So I imagine that this is going to help streamline. Cause if you've never had to sit in one of the way station bypasses, uh, it's, it's terrible. It, it, it hinders your availability as far as hitting appointments on time because you never know what to expect sometimes they're open sometimes they're closed this should cut down on that unless you're that person that gets walked in for <laughs> more in-depth inspection yeah um so that being said it's time to go behind the wheel all right, so it's time for Behind the Wheel. Being powered by CDL Life and them having the world's largest driver audience, we're able to ask them questions and get real data from real drivers uh, about their real opinions. So talking about AI, we decided to ask the audience, hey, uh, what do you think the effect AI is going to have on the future of trucking? Uh, and I assumed that it was going to be a lot of stuff about automated trucks, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but over half of the drivers were more concerned that there's already safety mechanisms in the truck, such as ones that can tell if you're fatigued, if you're wearing a seatbelt, if you're on your phone, et cetera, et cetera, that don't actually require a camera. And so their fear is what's going to be developed out of that? How smart is it going to get? And realistically, what's next? Because they feel like there's you know, several of them pointed out, there's always something in the pipeline that just terrifies them or makes them uncomfortable you know it went from e-logs to now a bunch of people have cameras and then it turned into all these sensors like what is the next intrusion with that um then the the other slightly less than half um essentially asked what in quote the steering wheel holders are going to do <laughs> so pretty much just at that point they they feel like with ai that will take out a lot of the work um and it, it's basically just a lot of jokes about people that don't know how to drive and how it's going to work out well for them um but charles what do you uh, let's just stick with the the devices and the technology uh how do you feel about that i understand the premise of wanting to make the road safer i just wish that the same effort that we put into every semi truck being safer on the road which statistically is not the problem that they put a fraction of that one fourth of that in the holding the four wheelers accountable on the road well, I mean, the other thing, too, is when you look at those numbers, the FMCSA's numbers, um, the percentage of fatal accidents with trucks is so low. And I know there's there's less trucks uh, on the road, but like it's so low that that's that's 
pretty crazy the amount of effort that we put into commercial vehicles that we don't put into our cars, you know, our trucks. And the cost of this technology is not cheap. The fleets aren't being turned over just because new tech comes out and it comes out of the factory with this tech. It's being installed. It's being procured and installed. So the fact that they're going to this extent for that, I mean, I just want to say, like, I, I think it's cool. We're trying to make it safer, but insurance companies suck. Yeah, that was actually my next question. This is off topic, uh, but I, I want your take on it because I know how I feel about it. So these, you know, so a good example is like when e-logs happened and, you know, all like there's the whole thing about glider kits and et cetera. What do you think would happen if the general public were forced by insurance companies to install all these safety measures in their own vehicles if they didn't already come with them? Well, we already know the answer. Look at the EV push. Half the nation's pushing back against it, and you're going to say, hey, you got to put this in? Like, can't even get people in four-wheelers to drive sober. <laughs> so, I mean, like, well, it, there's going to be a lot of pushback, and I understand why they don't because they're going to rock the boat, and then people are going to put things in legislation to block this, and I know it's crazy if trucking companies would band together and say this is ridiculous but there are some of the cool things that are going into place that are better for the trucking companies and protect the drivers like dash cams huge benefit to the driver i've watched them exonerate drivers from charges that would have ended their career or life yeah inward too inward ones believe it or not have exonerated drivers from wrongdoing because everyone wants to point the finger at the driver and say oh he was on the phone or she was on the phone and Oh, no, look, this camera shows otherwise. They've also been the nail in the coffin in scenarios where it wasn't accused. So, I mean, there's two sides to that coin. That is enough time for that. So it's time to go behind the desk with 10th Street. All right. So it's time to go behind the desk with 10th Street. And I got Joe Franco here with me today. How's it going, Joe? Charles, what's going on? Good to see you again. Yeah, it's always nice having you guys here and the conversations we have. So we're talking about AI this week, but you know, you guys have a lot going on over there. You guys have pretty robust platforms. So tell us a little bit about what you guys have on that end. Yeah, no, absolutely. No, I, you know, I've been with the company for about 10 years and I love talking to our clients because every, you know, every time it's night and day, right? If we haven't spoken, you know, in a few months, we're always coming out with new releases, new enhancements. And I, I love that periodic feedback that we have with our clients, because it really gives us the opportunity to have a dial um, on what they need, but also monitoring the market. Uh, you know, in our in our role, you know, we take it seriously. We know a lot of clients they entrust us um, with being that partner to support them, making sure that they're getting what they need um, and continue to be successful. So, what are we working on right now? Um, some of the hot things are Gen AI. Um, I think it's everybody's hot topic. We know there's there's excitement, but there's also fears, there's concerns, there's just a lot of emotions attached to it. So we're releasing a number of enhancements. And what we want to do in our role is extinguish some of that anxiety. You know, we know it's scary, we know it's radical change, but at the end of the day, there's been that same anxiety with things in the past. And we want to be able to roll it out in a way where people feel comfortable with it. You know, people aren't afraid of it. They embrace it. There's this horrible, well, not horrible, but there is a, um, a paradigm that, you know, this industry is the last to either embrace or adopt new technologies. And we don't want that to be the case. We want to be the innovator and we want to be that partner. So with our clients, what we're doing is we're guiding them. Hey, first of all, get comfortable. Um, learn what AI is capable of. Um, learn the, the potential, the limitations, get your team, you know, coach on it. And then from there, baby steps, you know, incrementally add more capabilities to your program. Um, I get questions all the time. When is automation too much? Well, what I say is you want to make it so that the human connection is still preserved, right? That is the biggest thing. There's so many tasks that are repetitive, they're uh, redundant and I, I hate wasting time that isn't productive. And that's what we're telling our clients. When I first started uh, about almost 10 years ago, people, we did analysis and clients asked, you know, how many touch points does it take to, you know, connect with the driver? It was maybe five, now it's 15 or 20. This is all time that is wasted, that it's not leading to any productive outcomes. 
So with the Gen I, we're going to be able to overcome that, where we can compress that down a few um, touch points so that way they can focus on that human interaction. Attention truckers, it only takes one ticket to lose your job because of unnecessary traffic convictions. But you can protect your career with Driver's Legal Plan, an actual national law firm dedicated to protecting the rights of truck drivers. We make the highest quality legal representation available to truck drivers and we make it affordable. You can rest easy knowing you have a trucker's attorney always on your side. Call Driver's Legal Plan today to start protecting your driving record and your career. That being said, it's time to make sense, make sense. Uh, and we are talking about AI today. Um, you know, and there's there's a lot of aspects. There are a lot of implications, kind of like we covered in the segment earlier where we asked drivers. Um, but today we kind of just like wanted to look at where it's at um, to kind of show you the tools that are available to you. Um, and in doing that, uh, we have a few examples. Um, and before we really get into it, I know that somebody specifically uses chat GPT in their marketing. I wonder who it could be. Hmm. AI has come a long way and, you know, depending on how you use it, it could be a really big asset to, you know, manpower issues. So for me, I like to type things fast. Anyone that knows how I type things knows that generally if you watch my post on LinkedIn, on my personal LinkedIn, in the first five minutes, it's been edited. And it's because there's a typo. I type fast, I hit send. Uh, I've actually conditioned myself to go in there and put it in the chat GPT to make sure that uh, I'm not missing any of that stuff because I do work fast on that. Um, authenticity matters. Uh, but yeah, that signature is being removed thanks to chat GPT. It also, uh, it, it's evolved. Like we've done cool stuff with it that we've been playing around with, Paul. I mean, you guys use it in your realm of work. Well, and the inter the interesting thing too is we talked trash on it a few months ago. I talked trash to it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the thing now is is with prompts, it's come far enough that if you know, obviously you just type in create me a trucking ad copy, uh it, it'll be super generic, but then you could be like, Hey, make it funny. Um, include this, include that, uh, and actually get it to modify, uh, the, yeah. So what's really important is learning how to prompt. Um, so yeah, speaking of prompts, um, one example is we used an app. Uh, it was actually Adobe Firefly to create some realistic pictures of trucks. So here's the first example. Um, yeah, it's just, I mean, it looks photo realistic um all right and uh this is the second one um it's great but sometimes you know kind of like how ai used to have trouble with fingers um you know sometimes the ai has a little bit of a struggle with uh trailer tires it always wants to give them an extra axle <laughs> yeah it, it usually or even the truck itself it usually tries to give it you know like a it's like a super 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 single um you know and then like it'll give it three in the back and that kind of thing but it's it's come a long way they don't they don't put stacks coming out of the middle of it anymore um you know so that that's nuts but the other thing too is now there's a lot of programs that you can actually take a picture put the picture in it and change it to something else so i decided to have a little bit of fun i used these three pictures one of each of us uh, and put it into this app, which you got to remember, um, mine and Josh's faces in those pictures are covered by microphones. Charles's is not, uh, which I think is fun. I'm not sure I'm going to agree with this is fun by the time you spit these out. <laughs> That's okay. Um, so the first one is Josh as a businessman. Damn. You clean up, dude. I know. Now they start paying me the big bucks now. Now, here is me as a doctor. I, I'd like to think my face isn't that round, but I could be wrong. You know, let me know. You look like the budget-friendly version of House. <laughs> I could care less what your face looks like. I don't want you operating on me if you're a doctor. That's terrifying. Yeah, if you walk in with a rubber glove, I'm out, my guy. <laughs> All right. 
Oh, well, in this next one, clearly the AI knew that Charles has lived in Tennessee for over two years now because it made him a cowboy. Yeah. Uh, he did actually on the phone the other day. I don't remember what you said, but you started talking in a southern accent on, on accident. Um, anyway, this one's probably the best, though. It is uh, Josh is a soccer player. Like, it got your tattoos and just about everything just out of getting your face behind a microphone. Josh, have you ever played soccer? I have not, but after looking at that photo and how good I look in that, maybe I should take that up, you know? Uh, so the next one, once again, you know, the, it is what it is. Um, uh, the AI spit it out. This is me as like a rich guy in a luxury car. I'm, you know, it doesn't seem like a terrible life. I'm telling you, man, you look like the wish version of Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Aluminum man, a lesser metal. Um, I get that. Uh, and you know, it is what it is. All right. So you guys have all these cool ones of you. Like, what'd you put in cool for me? Well, have you ever seen a John Hughes movie, Charles? You know, 16 K say anything. The breakfast club. You look like a teenage heartthrob, uh, from the breakfast club, but not just anyone. Check this out. Oh, come on. This ain't cool. Like you got to be a rich guy in a luxury car. He got to be a soccer player, and I get to be like dirty dancing ripoff. Yeah, I mean, you know, the eighties were a fun time, and I think you were the only person old enough to actually have talked during them. Ouch! <laughs> That's what it is. All right. Well, and and to be fair, um, uh, so the next one is a small compilation of videos from a new a uh, video AI platform called Sora. Um, and you notice I'm not talking uh, as excited. So this is uh, the future of AI video and where it's at right now. Oh, dude, the focus, how do they, how's it pulling focus, man? I wonder what the unemployment line looks like um, right about now, because that's what I'm kind of feeling like, you know? Yeah, well, I mean, the, the lighting, the shadows, I mean, that takes away your grips. That takes away, like, so many things. Um, Jesus, it even does slow-mo. <sighs> you, you guys are done. Your, your jobs are gone. Yeah, well, you know, it, it's kind of terrifying, you know, but that's the important part about learning prompts because that could be your job is prompting video in, in five to ten years. <laughs> Tomorrow's youth doesn't have to have management skills or anything. They just have to be really damn good at giving prompts. My name is Paul. I'm the CDL Life VP of video prompts. And Josh is a video prompt editor um, who I work with. Uh, oh, but that being said, um, you know, it's, it's little talked about. Um, but uh, a couple months ago, Charles gave me a phone number and just said, call it. And I said, what? And being a millennial, I don't like to make phone calls. So then he forced me on a three-way call. Um, and uh, I was on the phone with this recruiter uh, from a trucking company. Um, clearly, she wasn't the best. Um, but she was breathing, and she was in the seat, and she was giving me information. Um, and so I tried to talk to her, throw her some curveballs. Um, and she was able to get me most of the information. Um, and then I asked a harder question, and then she kind of wigged out on me a little bit. <laughs> she glitched out. Is what it turned out to be. Um, yeah, Charles, can you explain AI recruiters and where that's at? I mean, AI is being applied to all different facets of business. And just like everything else, recruiting got its turn. So this was a system that I was contracted to review. And uh, in doing so, I brought in a bunch of different people, uh, you being one of them. It's so well thought out that when the AI is speaking, you hear phones ringing in the background, keyboard clicking happening. Um, and for the most part, if I had to give it an honest scale, I would give it a six out of 10. And the only reason I'm giving it that is because there are certain terms that are used in the conversation in trucking, such as 1099, that it can't compute, to say quite frankly. Um, it would say this is a 1099 position, which was when I first realized exactly where the problem was. 
Um, I even brought Lombard on and Lombard caused it to completely fritz out because did he didn't he just do it by like making up a name or something? It was hilarious, but um it got to the point where it would self-correct until we brought Lombard on and talked to it. Lombard had a conversation with this thing and he couldn't quite comprehend that this was a AI driven platform. He thought this was just the world's worst recruiter because anytime it could not compute a response, it would turn around and say, sorry, that's not my job, which is the worst possible thing you can say to another human being period. And it just kept repeating it. He's like, well, what can you do? And it's sorry, this isn't my job. And he was getting mad. Uh, and finally I had to let him know like, Hey man, this is an AI. I, uh, I just needed to test this out and you broke it. So any recruiters out there that are wondering what your worst day in life looks like, call Lombard, try to pitch your offer. Yeah. Well that, and, uh, you know, if it, if it ever comes out, call that number and, uh, it'll be kind of like when we watch those videos and you'll know what you're headed towards, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it looks like marketing. It looks like video. I mean, even Charles, if you go on Charles's, uh, social media, he's got, AI music that writes hot seat services songs. Um, dude. And, and as a musician, it, and, and having recorded and having like a lot of home recordings, it mixes, um, the melodies are insane. It literally learned from like all of the top chart songs from like every genre for the last, however long. And it's so catchy and it's so good. And uh, I just, I thought it was going to take my job first, but it clearly has come for my hobby. There's some interesting takeaways on that too. So I, when we were playing with that, I sent it out to some people and the feedback overall was really good. I mean, one of the responses I got from one of the carrier partners was, Hey, I heard this and I wanted to start twerking to it. It was great. Can you send this to me? I had someone reach out when I posted it and ask me where they can download it. Cause they were having fun jamming out to it. Um, but there are some nuances to it, like the word lead. Got to spell it L-E-E-D instead of L-E-A-D. Because otherwise it's like lead generation. I'm like, no, we're not generating lead. We're generating leads. <laughs> Lead's bad. Well, that and, and then, you know, there, yeah, there are some caveats to it. And the interesting thing to me, and I know this doesn't really matter for anybody, but like I followed a lot of AI music stuff at the beginning, especially when the whole Drake cover, is this really Drake? Oh, no, it's a fake song thing came out. Um uh, the thing that got me was some of the newer apps can actually do like death metal. So it's like, you know, they're like doing the like scream, like, the, you know, and stuff. And it's like, what? Like, how do you even, it, it just, it's crazy. It blows my mind. Um, so that being said, how do you think that that uh, shortly, uh, how do you think that's going to affect uh, recruiting and marketing realistically moving forward about, I don't know, like three to five years. You know, honestly, uh, I'm looking forward to it because I think there's enough hesitancy with people applying it in the wrong ways where it's more of a tool and you should want to test and embrace the tool. Test it out. There's parts of it you're not going to like. There's parts of it that are going to work for you. There's parts of it that might even enhance what you're trying to do. You know, in our past episode, we talked about standing out. This is one of the ways you can stand out. I leverage anything I can that's not only going to allow us to stand out, but that also aligns with our brand and having fun is one of our things. So, you know, outside of just hiring drivers as our jam being our thing, we want to stand out. We want people to know it can be fun. We want them to be interested in it. And this has been a tool to help us with that. Yeah. Um, Charles has a much more positive outlook than I do. Um, you know, you have drivers who have been spending years and years being afraid of uh, self-driving trucks. Now, you can trauma bond with them because if you don't learn how to prompt in the next 10 years, you're probably not going to have a job. <laughs> All right. Yeah, hey, honestly, though, you should be worried. If I had your guy's job, I'd be worried. If I had your job, I'd be worried. I didn't even know it was a, a fake recruiter. Um, but, you know, that's that's you only have so much time to learn how to prompt and learn how to use this as a tool. If you don't learn how to use it as a tool, you're going to have a bad time. So you need to learn it. You have a limited amount of time. A limited amount of time is what we have. And this is uh, probably a good time to end it. Thanks for tuning in to Sense Per Mile. I'm your host, Charles Gracie. And I'm your co-host, Paul Gibson. See you next time.